Hilton Head Island in South Carolina is one of the top vacation destinations in the U.S. But long before this, it was a refuge for formerly enslaved people brought here in bondage from West and Central Africa. This is what you do, this is how you eat, this is how you survive. Their traditions, customs, and histories blended to form a distinct group of people called the Gullah Geechee. This community, formed mostly in isolation on islands along the southern U.S. coast, has been under relentless siege by the threat of commercial development and land acquisition. They built the bridge because they wanted progress, but they didn't really take and invest in the culture and what, you know, and what we had. In Hilton Head, folks we spoke with said the town is putting the needs of tourists over the community. This is what they don't show you. They show you white sandy beaches. And as multi-million dollar housing developments continue to go up, Gullah people often can't afford to keep up with rising property taxes. Sold 8,500, number 110. And so an island that used to be more than 95% black is now close to 90% white. If it continues to go the way it's going, you know, they won't need us here. We have to be here to tell our own story. And their story is a warning to mindful tourists everywhere. Your dream vacation could be enabling someone else's erasure. Know the history of where you're going. Know how the people got the land on the places that you're going to. And don't support people who are stealing other people's land. The story is uh, with the Gullah culture. You know, we buried our folks, you know, close to the water. And the significance behind that was to give the souls passage back to the motherland, back to Africa, back home. But when you find a golf course <laughs> in between the water and where the cemetery is, <laughs> even in the, in the grave, it's still a challenge for peace. That's their piece. They want a piece of this. So development, development, development. Taiwan Scott is a native Gullah Geechee Islander on Hilton Head. I walk up here and I look at the sign. And this is the level of disrespect. Braddock's Point Cemetery, African American. Spray paint out. You know, they can care less about what they have done to us as people and they, what they continue doing to us. He took us to the burial grounds of his ancestors, now located on the 18th hole of a golf course in a gated community that you need permission to enter. As we walked out to the burial grounds, which the Gullah community believes extends all the way to the water, golfers casually came through. While these folks enjoyed the putting course, Ty was left to think about his ancestors who lie beneath them. Just, just a comment of hearing this is just a beautiful fairway and, you know, how nice and smooth it is. We don't get this back at home. <laughs> that, that, that bothers me so much. It's, it's almost as though, you know, you want to stand out there with a big sign and say, a cemetery is here. You know, and how much, you know, how aware people would be. You know, some people probably don't even care. But I think a lot of people, if they only knew that, they wouldn't play here. What most people don't know is that Black people lived on the island long before the ferry and the bridge brought outsiders. Gullah people purchased property from state tax auctions after plantation owners abandoned the island during the Civil War. On Hilton Head, they formed the first self-governed town of formerly enslaved people in the country. It was called Mitchellville. For Gullah people, their ability to own land is Thank their you, history. Dear God. Glory to God! The Stewart family yes, is still standing strong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Despite rising property taxes and the threat of new development, a resilient group of families like the Stewarts 
have managed to hold on to their property and precious heritage for generations. We like to eat our fish is with the head on. And this is fresh fish, fresh caught fish. And we fry it with the head on. With some mustard and hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and our okra soup. soup. And it's always my favorite. Yes, sir. <laughs> And you know what we're missing? What? Oysters. Oysters. That was a major staple of this area October. here as well. Did they mention that to you? We only eat uh, uh, oysters in the months with an R. Uh huh. That's, That's right. right. Gullah people embrace storytelling, music, food, and spirituality, and even have their own unique language, a kind of mixed African Creole English. Betty, what them things Blas, oh, Blas used to say? You know all them little sayings, them little sayings she used to say. I tell you, oh shit, I ain't shit. Oh, oh goodbye, I ain't gone. All oh, oh, stragglers, ain't drunk. They are come here, and we are been here. We are been here. They just came in. I came here. Been here. Been here. They've been here when I came in. You just uh, visited. Uh -huh. <laughs> you just visited. That's right. You we, tourists. We've been here. We've been a tour. Uh -huh. We've been here. In the mid-1950s, when a bridge was built to make it accessible to the mainland, the island would transform into a resort-based economy that excluded the Gullah people. They built the bridge because they wanted progress, but they didn't really take and invest in the culture and what, you know, and what we had. That bridge, which has already been widened over the years, is now set for even further expansion onto the Stewart family's land. They can go anywhere they want to. They do not have to mess with 278 anymore. They don't took them people's land long enough. We won't have anything. So they're going to put us up. Where are they going to put us? In 1949, about 3,200 acres were owned by the Gullah Geechee on Hilton Head. Today, around 1,000 acres remain in the hands of their families. Meanwhile, traditional livelihoods like farming and fishing that sustained Gullah people for hundreds of years have also suffered. See this oyster right here? This is what you want. Well, you want to break off the rest. You tap one like that and there you got oyster. Ed Atkins is one of the few remaining Gullah Geechee commercial fishermen. Why is this important to, to Gullah culture? See this right here? This is how we survive. When, when you get them off of the deck and you take them home and you open them, this could be another meal for at least two or three days. Oyster prillo, oyster and rice, oyster bread, oyster stuffing. You never had an oyster stuffing? Oh man, y'all don't know. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Ed has watched his local industry erode over time because of increasing regulation and the inevitable forces of a system that has all but forgotten the Gullah people. In about another 15, 20 years, a Gullah Geechee man is not able to get in the river. If he don't, if he can't make a living, he can't support his family, can't pay tax. You lose your land, you lose your property. Who got it? The government gonna get it. The local government gonna get it. They gonna sell it to the highest bidder. How about 20, 000, 20, the highest bidders are here today to see if they can buy themselves a bit of this prime real estate at the county tax auction. Gullah people have been losing their land over just a few hundred dollars in unpaid taxes. But there's an informal tradition where if they stand up and say, heirs property, heirs property, heirs property here, people won't bid on their land. So we're actually going to go to a closed door meeting right now. Um, the treasurer is going to answer any questions for folks who are involved with heirs property and give them an opportunity to find out what their rights are during the tax auction. A lot of you here today may want to stand up and say heirs property when the property becomes available, you know, comes up to bid. And I want to make sure that you are all aware that this is a tradition here. It's not a law. It's not a policy. I cannot enforce that tradition but I do want that tradition to remain here because it's important for all of you. This year, several bidders did not step aside and abide Simmons. by that tradition. Heirs property. Number, let's see, how about 1,500, ma'am? 1,500, now 16, 
How about 16? Anybody 16? 16? 17? 17? Anybody 17? Sold it. 1600 number 18. How about Benjamin Simmons here? 2000. Okay. Uh, 1700, ma'am. Now 18, 1900. 18, 19, 2000, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 3000, 35, 4, 45, 5, 55, 6, 65, 7, 7500, 8000, 8000, 8000, anybody anywhere, 8000, 8, 8500, now 9000, 9000, all in 9000, sold 8500, number 110, 8500, number 110. Priscilla Ajay and Georgetta Singleton both came to the auction today hoping to reclaim their land through the heirs' property tradition, but both were outbid. Sorry, it didn't work out the way you expected. Yeah. I'm glad that you were So what do we do now? Residents have exactly one year and a day after the tax sale to redeem their property by paying back taxes they owe with fees and interest. How did it make you feel that you got outbid on your own property? Very bad. Very bad. Sad. Sad. That someone, knowing that it's heir, heir's property, would try to take it away. What would you say to the bidder, if, if you could talk to them right now, what would you say to them about them, you know, bidding on your, your home? It's, it's just, please, <laughs> can we have it? Can my children enjoy the land, you know? without have to worry about it. Pass it on, let it, let it keep going like it was with these hundreds of years. While the threats of land displacement are impacting folks throughout the Gullah Geechee Corridor, back in Hilton Head, many folks believe the problem is so pervasive because it's baked into the system. We're in Shelter Cove here, Shelter Cove Harbor. This is what they want people to see, this side of Hilton Head. Not, not the reality of how Native Islanders are living, this. What they're not seeing is the dirt roads, the, the backed up sewer lines, the lack of in infrastructure, the, the drainage systems, the, the ditches, you know, all of that is the reality. The town was developed as a series of private communities that provided services like water, sewage, and trash to the mostly white residents inside them. And the rest of the island, which was largely black, became dependent on the town for only minimal services. Why is the Gullah community still living like this? Why am I driving down the road and there's no landscape medians in the Gullah community? These are the questions that, that someone needs to be held responsible and accountable for. Someone needs to answer. We went looking for answers and this is who Hilton had referred us to. Sharice Du Bois is the liaison between the town and the Gullah Geechee Task Force, which residents say isn't really meeting their needs or resolving problems fast enough. What is the town doing to gain the Gullah community's trust? We are, uh, trust in the Gullah community is very difficult. If you're able to get in or be trusted by them, then you need to consider yourself lucky. Why do you think that is? Very, because Gullah people have lived in isolation so long. Um, historically. They came to these islands, they established a culture, they're very close-knit, they're family-oriented, and when you're not from any of the areas, you're not connected with the family, it's hard to connect with them. And that takes a process. That's not something you can barge in and just do. Not only do folks here say the town has failed to live up to its responsibilities, but it's also the town itself that's buying up property. Hilton Head is the largest owner of formerly Gullah-owned land in the Stewart family's neighborhood. It's not a good feeling to know that someone or people are after what you have. When they have so much and you have so little, but they still want to take yours. And so families like the Stewarts find strength in the bonds of their community, their faith in God, and their history of overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds. Hey,
God, you feel like you're praying when you come. Come out the wilderness. Come out the wilderness. Come come out the wilderness. Don't let the developers come in. If you let one come in, more come. And when they, even if you willingly sell your land, some of your land, they're coming back to get the rest. Know where you're going. Know the history of where you're going. Know how the people got the land on the places that you're going to. If they didn't get it the right way, don't go there because you're supporting something that's wrong and unfair. Come out the wilderness. Come, come out the wilderness. Come out the wilderness. Feel like praying when you come. Come 